Hello there football fans, and especially hello there England fans. Wanted to do an episode today just to reflect on the uh, the World Cup so far, but specifically the England versus Iran game. Um, obviously, this is a World Cup unlike any other, apart from the fact it's being held in the winter. It's being held in the Middle East, never been held there before. There's been obviously a huge amount of conjecture, a huge amount of criticism, controversy, and debate um, politically, culturally, and on a great number of other issues with nothing to do with the football. I don't think it's appropriate at this point in time to touch on those issues. Might be more appropriate towards the end of the tournament where we can see if any of those kind of accusations had merit in them and to see if any sort of change has been brought about as a result of the World Cup. So maybe we'll touch on that later. Right now, I just want to focus on the football. The opening ceremony was a mixture of grandeur and splendour and bizarreness. Um, if anyone is unsure, go to YouTube and have a look at Morgan Freeman, no less. Um, his cameo is, it has to be seen to be believed. Um, opening ceremony apart, I think the opening game went uh, very much to plan in terms of if you look at my World Cup preview show, link is in the description, uh, I said that Ecuador would be a cut above the likes of Qatar. I think Qatar are going to struggle. I think their lack of quality is going to be their downfall. But you saw the energy, you saw the effort, you saw their willingness to shoot from pretty much anywhere. Again, if you look at the profile that I did on them in a previous episode, um, you'll see that they play pretty much to type. Ecuador are not a team of superstars. Still getting a Valencia leading the line up front. Very much about the collective, very much about being solid and united and um, their spirit and just being that little bit too good got them over the line. Um, they will be there or thereabouts in terms of uh, threatening to go through from the group. It's a bit of a shame that the World Cup is in Qatar in the sense that they are not a footballing powerhouse. They became the first host nation to lose the opening game of a World Cup. As I say, they are, they're going to struggle to, to make it out the group. And that's going to be a shame as the tournament wears on because that fanfare and that excitement and that belief that you get from the home nation if they progress deep into the tournament will probably fade quite quickly. Um, the other games, uh, if we look at Senegal versus Holland, we saw two sides without real cutting edge. If you again go back to the World Cup preview episode, uh, I said that Senegal are going to miss Sadio Mane massively. Somebody to come in and score the goals, make those incisive runs and stretch back lines of opposition. They don't really have any one of that quality up front when he's not there. They've got energy. They do have quality in the middle of the pitch. They are generally all right defensively. Um, but when they are looking to attack, whether they have an out ball or that last ball or somebody who can just sniff a goal, Mane is such a huge loss for them. Um, they huffed and they puffed against the Netherlands. And, you know, it was pretty much bang for bang and for, for the majority of the match. The Netherlands, I did say, they're lacking a goal threat themselves. They don't have a quality forward in the mould of Van Nistelrooy or Burkamp or Van Persie. They don't have a target man. They don't have a poacher. They don't have a striker who's going to run in behind. Janssen was a passenger for the majority of that match. A couple of players who were either not in form or played out of position. Cody Gakpo played too deep. Made a fantastic late off the ball run, brilliantly picked out by Frankie de Jong for the opening goal. Um, so we've seen what he can do. It might be that he becomes their focal point later in the tournament. Um, the injury to Memphis Depay means that they are restricted to one of their better attacking outlets. We saw Stephen Bergwin, again somebody else. If you look at the World Cup preview show, I said that he will have a say in this tournament. Started the first game. Wasn't, wasn't massively involved um, but his pace is an outlet Holland are decent on the ball they'll press pretty solid defensively um, overall probably the slightly better of the two sides um, easily for forgettable game the sort of game where you you do what you need to do get the three points and move on um, a tricky game for Holland has been overcome you would now uh, fancy them to win the group possibly even with nine points then we have Wales against the United States. I said that the United States were not a great side and that a previous generation of player 
um, was probably a better incarnation. That said, they've got willingness, they've got hunger, they've got desire, they've got Pulisic in the team, they've got George Ware's son, Timothy Ware. They do pose a threat and they do pose a stubbornness. We saw against Wales, who for whatever reason just could not get going in the first half, that the United States, when they're allowed to play, when they're allowed to get on top of you, they can ping balls directly into the channels. They've got pace. They've got directness. Um, they're fearless. They'll give you a game. They'll definitely compete. They were the better of the two sides for 45 minutes to an hour. Um, could have been more than one goal up against the Welsh, who showed typical Welsh courage, desire, fight and spirit. Got back into the game. Got themselves that penalty, which Gareth Bale, um, their talisman, converted. Might have won the game at the end as well. Um, all in all, Wales showed themselves to be a solid team, pretty much again in keeping with how we covered them in the preview show. Um, difficult to break down, stubborn. Um, they'll, all, they'll, they'll be there or thereabouts in every single match. Um, you would fancy both of those sides to, to beat Iran. So it's, it's very, very finely poised. Having looked, we'll cover the England game in just a second, and having looked at the other three nations in, in that group, England having beaten Iran, I think if England turn up and put in a similar calibre of performance, they should beat the United States, and they should, and well, they should, I say, should beat Wales, but never easy in a local derby. But the United States will be tricky for England, but if England approach it with the right mentality, with patience and incisiveness, I fancy them to get the job done against the United States. I would fancy Wales to beat Iran, and then it's a winner-take-all between England and Wales. A very, a very finely poised group. England and Iran, I think, I think the two goals for Iran were a mixture of complacency by England, and you have to give the Iranian forward Tahimi uh, credit. He is a quality player, plays for Porto. He's averaging 20-plus goals a season with them, which is not to be sniffed at. He scored uh, about one in two in the Champions League for Porto. This is a guy with pedigree. This is a guy who knows where the back of the net is. He worked himself brilliantly for the opening goal to peel off the back of Harry Maguire and unleash a very quick strike, which beat Pickford. All ends up. Iran hit the crossbar. Well, actually, Jordan Pickford produced an excellent save. As towards the end of the game, England did switch off a little bit and Iran were relentlessly pushing forward. So it could have ended 6-3. Um, against the better calibre team, I don't think England would be so open. I don't think they'd be so lackadaisical and so complacent. Um, the penalty was a bizarre award when you consider the manhandling that happened to Harry Maguire in the first half. So take those a couple of incidents out. I think England will be tighter and more stubborn against better calibre opposition. I'm not going to read too much into the goals that they conceded. I think more focus should be given on the fact that England are usually ponderous. They don't have a great record in opening games of tournaments. Um, I think people of a certain vintage might remember uh, 1982, when they scored within about 20-25 seconds against France, who themselves were an excellent side, um, only to draw the game one all. So an inability to kill teams off or to maintain an intensity for 90 minutes has been an Achilles heel for England in the past. Um, if we look at, say, Euro 96, should have beaten Switzerland, didn't. Um, France 98, they did win their opening game against Tunisia. Not too dissimilar circumstances as this Iran match, funnily enough. But more often than not, England do struggle in opening matches of major tournaments. And I think praise should be given for the professionalism and for the positivity that they approach this game with. They could have been pragmatic. They could have just looked to get a couple of goals, see the game out, get the win and move on. But they wanted to go on the front foot. They wanted to play to their strengths, which is to get on the ball, to play with a bit of pace, to play with a bit of tempo. England haven't tried to be too technical, too ticky tackery, which has been the sort of the flavour of the month in the Premier League now, playing out from the back and everyone looking to get multiple touches of the football. They didn't overcomplicate things. There were some neat one-twos, some nice flicks, but generally there was some direct running and putting the ball in the box. That is England's strength. When you play someone like Mason Mount in that sort of 10 or an advanced 8, it, he is somebody who will give you energy, somebody who will defend from the front. Doesn't necessarily have the nuance or creativity of a, of a Grealish or a Madison or a Foden. 
he gives you more of a balance in that sort of role. So by having him and Bellingham, you're fairly solid in midfield. Rice sitting and holding, that's fine. Um, against a better calibre team, I think they'll be a little bit more disciplined and a bit more um, picky when it comes to what rule, r- what runs to make and how gung-ho they'll be in terms of being offensive. I thought the fullbacks were fine. I thought Kieran Trippier provided good width. I thought Luke Shaw provided good width. Um, they did put in a number of good balls from open play and set pieces into the box. England were a threat. You saw partly why Harry Maguire is in the team against a better team. Could he play a two? Maybe. Against a three? Solidly. Although you do then take away some of the emphasis from your attacking side. But his threat from set pieces should not be underestimated. He was taken off as a precaution because he didn't feel well. There are the news coming up from the England campus. He doesn't have any kind of knock or muscular injury or concussion. He genuinely didn't feel particularly well. A couple of days of R&R and he should be back. I thought generally he did okay, along with John Stones. Um, the penalty that, for the shirt tug by John Stones, that happens every set piece, you know, in every game these days. I can't believe that that was given a penalty. And the bear hug, where the player wasn't even looking at the ball, just looking to take Maguire out in the first few minutes, I think, I can't believe that wasn't given a penalty. The inconsistency is a joke on the VAR side. Um it's probably the most established partnership England have in terms of defence. With Carl Walker back, you could make an argument for Walker, Stones and Maguire as a three, with Shaw and Trippier as wing backs. It just means that probably one of um, what would have been a three in England's midfield will probably be dropped. And you'll probably fancy that to be Mason Mount. So if he plays a 5-2-3, he'll probably have two in midfield, which is Rice and Bellingham. And then he'll probably have three up top which would be Sterling, Kane and probably Saka. I think it was really good that England tried to maintain that attacking focus all the way through the game, looking to score goals. It's good that substitutes came on and scored. Uh, Grealish got a tap in. Wilson on another day could have been selfish and gone for goal himself. But the awareness and the and the togetherness for him to make the run and, have, and, and pick out a teammate to score the goal is good. Bodes well for future games. Good that Marcus Rashford came on, scored a goal, very composed finish. And we know with Marcus, he can come on a bit like Callum Wilson as somebody up top who can stretch teams as a as a out-and-out out nine and, and run on the shoulder of the last man. He can play on the left, he can play on the right. So he gives England a huge number of options, plus his pace and his finishing. Fantastic for Jack Grealish to score a goal. That will give his confidence the world of good. Sometimes, no one could deny his ball playing ability, but sometimes his end product is lacking, especially for a £100 million footballer. So it's great that he's got on the score sheet. It's great that Foden's got some minutes under his belt. Um, Great that Callum Wilson has come on. If we can get Harry Kane scoring, then that bodes well for England because he's probably England's main goal threat against world-class opposition. Um, If England do the business early against the United States. It would be good for James Madison to get some minutes and possibly even Calvin Phillips, just so that all of England's midfield, all of the options and all the permutations have got minutes under their belt and are used to the heat and the conditions, the ball, the pitch. Um, The more players that England can bring into the fold and get some minutes under their belt, the better, because it means if you do need to call upon your squad, um, you don't have any kind of worries or fears or rustiness. I thought Jordan Pickford did well in goal um, when called upon. I don't think you could read too much into it. I think it's good that England have gone forward and looked to score goals because if they do drop points against either Wales or the United States, goal scored and goal difference could count. So that's great. The intensity, the fact it was more of a 4-3-3 in the first half rather than a 4-2-3-1 is good. It shows an offensive um, thought process rather than defensive. Um, and it's good that England sort of picked up from where they left off against Germany when they when they drew three all. In the last 15 minutes of that game, England went very attacking, played to their strengths and put the Germans under pressure. England started like that against Iran. I think they'll be a bit more measured against a better team. But it showed what they can do. When they play to their strengths and they're looking to get the best out of their attacking players, they will cause any team problems. I think England fans should rejoice that England have had a, a, a strong... Uh, powerful opening game. It sends a message to the rest of the World Cup. We've just seen Argentina lose to Saudi Arabia. And 
what we saw in that game was Argentina on top, a couple of decisions either way where they could have had an offside goal given, weren't given, and their level dropped off. It became very pedestrian. Saudi grew into the game, took their chances. So I think it's a good message for England to show that they didn't have that level of complacency. They were very calculating and measured and professional in their application. That will serve them well. And I think they've sent a powerful message out in the tournament. And I think England fans should take each game as it comes. Revel in the, in the victory so far. Don't get carried away, but also don't do too much of a disservice and say it was just Iran. Any team at the World Cup deserves to be at the World Cup. No such thing as an easy game anymore at international football, as Argentina have just proved. Iran are ranked 20, 25 places above Saudi Arabia. So I think that speaks volumes as well. Um, if England continue in this manner, they'll get through the group. Then it comes down to who you get in the draw. I think England fans should just be thankful that the quality or the, the emphasis that England have in terms of where the strengths lie were played to in this game. And it is a good sign that the players look fresh, look hungry, look like they've got energy and very professional, taking nothing for granted, giving every team, every game, the merits and respect that it deserves. So I think for a first game, England fans should be very happy and satisfied so far. I think now that we've got the first shock out of the way, which was Argentina losing 2-1 to Saudi Arabia and Lionel Messi only scoring because of a penalty, I think the tournament's really going to start opening up now. Quality of the games has been all right. Um, the Wales-USA game wasn't great. The Senegal-Dutch game wasn't great. Argentina looked fairly slick, although pedestrian today. Um, I think if they click into gear, we should see Argentina sort of uh, play to the tag of one of pre-tournament favourites. England looks pretty good. So, so far, so good. There hasn't been any major reports of unrest other than England fans complaining about the lack of alcohol. Haven't heard too much in, by way of reports of overzealous policing yet. Um, there's been a little bit in terms of extreme hospitality, which is fantastic, and a little bit of an almost authoritative penning in of fans when it comes towards matches, which, you know, given that they are a very conservative society, you know, calling off fans prior and, and, and up to matches, um, I think is not to be unexpected. It's a shame, but overall, so far, so good in terms of fan experience thus far. So in a nutshell, England probably looking one of the better teams in the tournament so far, although it's in its very early stages. Shock of the tournament, undoubtedly Saudi Arabia beating Argentina. That will go down as an all-time shock. We still haven't seen the likes of Brazil, France or Portugal yet. Um, so many teams yet to sort of play their first game. Once we've got those first round of fixtures out of the way, the likes of Spain and Germany and others as well, we'll have a better idea of who's in form, who's fit, who looks like a threat, where teams' mentality are at. Um, but yeah, for an England fan, so far, so good. <laughs>